For the next month, I'll be doing cryotherapy. Why? I don't think you can escape the cold plunge bro on Instagram. At some point in the last year, it seems that you cannot be a male fitness influencer without jumping in a cold plunge every morning. Cold exposure therapy is everywhere. Promising improved mood, mental health, improved body composition, and ads that literally say you will burn 800 calories a session. I am a dopamine gremlin. Oh, isn't it cute? I have this slump every day that I can't find a solution to, and I'm wondering if cold exposure is that solution. Warning, I did do cold shower in the past. Hated it. I would love to do a cold plunge every morning, but I live in a 500 square foot apartment in downtown Vancouver, so I don't have room for a cold plunge. Can I jump in the ocean? The logistics of that sound miserable. I gotta walk out in the freezing cold, potentially get E. coli. That's not cold exposure, that's survival tactics. So that left me the third, potentially most extreme of the three, cryotherapy. Day one, they make you put on gloves, dry socks, no wet clothes allowed, slippers, and then the most painful part, the one minute of nerves right before you step in. Since when I'm in Sweden, I'm like oh, everywhere. Every, like every, every corner person. has a sports store. The only the favorite of high-level athletes like LeBron James. So let's see if this changes my life and debunk whether you can actually burn 800 calories in one session. Do you need some black gloves for me? Oh, the black gloves. Ah. Yes. Just keep moving? Uh, yeah. Keep Thank you for talking to me. That went by so fast. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. People are like, you're Canadian, you should be good at it. I'm like, no, I've, I've done enough. You merely adopted the queen. I was born in it. I'm gonna be measuring metrics on my aura ring. Day one, here's my HRV, which is typically in the low 20s, sometimes the 30s. It tends to get a bit higher when I'm consistently doing sauna. My average REM and deep sleep is about one and a half hours each, and a total of, yeah, six and a half hours of sleep. Not great, but this is why I'm doing things like this. And kind of example of how my body looks, because we're gonna mention body composition. I have no goal, we'll just see if it changes. <laughs> after day one i felt buzzed i felt very cold for a long time a couple hours after i just had this like deep chill and yet at the same time blood flowing it was an odd high i've never experienced okay unexpected pro of cryo you know after you have the first couple sips of a beer and you get that like little buzz you're not really drunk yourself you get that same feeling afterwards like you're a little giddy now, how does it feel to do cryotherapy? Stage one, torture. Right before you hop in, that is the worst part, just knowing you're gonna have this cold and you assume it's going to be pure pain. Then you actually pull up your big girl pants, get into it and realize it's more of like a prickly sensation. Number three, your nipples will be the worst. So yes, I did embrace them with a big hug. I think stage four would be counting down the clock and somehow one second feels like 10. But luckily, if you have amazing employee at the place you do cryotherapy they talk to you the whole time and it goes over like sometimes the small talk is worse than the actual cold therapy but they're they were lovely they were lovely at the place i went to then after you get the buzz and you just feel energized how cold people always say how cold now what was my protocol i'm gonna use andrew huberman because he's the goat here you can do more but at least 11 minutes of uncomfortable but safe cold exposure he recommends 11 minutes total per week. So I did three to four sessions, which worked about to be 11 to 13 minutes for the entire week. There's no real harm in doing a bit more, but it seems all the benefits kind of stop over 11. So you're just kind of wasting money and time past then. So what is the benefits of cold therapy? Deliberate cold exposure causes a significant release of ephedrine. Ephedrine? <laughs> no. Oh my God, that's so bad. Ephrep. I can't say this word. Epinephrine. Epha. Oh my God. This one of the words you can say in your head, but I can't say it loud. Epinephrine. That was awful. AKA adrenaline. Let's just adrenaline. We'll just go with that. And norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. It makes us feel alert, increased energy and focus, and the benefits long term would improve your resilience and grit because if you can get through a cold shower, you can get through a lot harder things. A meta analysis of cold water immersion effects on recovery found that cold exposure can be a highly effective recovery tool after high intensity exercise or endurance training. But it is recommended don't do it directly after. You can either do it before your workout or several hours after. And this isn't just cryotherapy, but cryotherapy is one component of cold exposure. There's cold plunges. You can just spend a long time outside. So like 30 minutes outside, not dressed really warm. So you kind of have a chill the entire time or a cold shower. And speaking of cold showers, I want to bring you to this week's game show. Introducing today's game show. Can Kelty do an ad read of her favorite product without screwing up one line in a freezing cold shower? The rules, I will have to do an entire ad read of AG1 in the cold shower. For every second I screw up, I have to stay in there longer, and at the very end, chug an entire thing of AG1. 
Can I do it in under 30 seconds? Let's find out. Day 14. This is weird. This is when I started to crave it. And I'm not a cold girly. I like to be warm. I like to be cozy. I want to live somewhere like LA where it's 25 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I don't know what that is for you Americans. You do the math. <laughs> that was mean. It's this. And I suddenly started craving that hit dopamine. Yes, I started to crave it. Who am I? Who is she? I don't know if I like her. Every time I incorporate one of these things, I start to like it. I'm like, <sighs> I love my life more, but like, I'm becoming one of those people. 19 year old clubbing Kelties. She don't you dare become one of these. We feel so good. We're so much more mentally stable. Okay, I'm on my way. Cry, cry. I'm gonna do this for a month and still not say it properly. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> Cryotherapy. And honestly, I look forward to it now. It is great. I haven't really noticed a ton. The only direct thing is I'm sleeping like a queen this month. You guys, my aura ring, my eight sleep is like, girl, gold star Olymp Olympic REM sleep, you. You all are out here trying to beat your Apple rings, beat your friends at Fitbit. No, no, no. You don't want to mess with my aura ring score. And I think it might be because of the cryo because it's definitely not my seasonal depression because I, it's April. I thought it'd be gone. You're not supposed to have seasonal depression in spring. About halfway through, I am loving this, but I'm still curious if this actually does any benefits aside from like little hits of dopamine and that. Like, does it change my body composition? We hear all these things like freezing fat cells and burning 800 calories. Like, I'm still curious. I got some calculations at the end, which might help us figure it out. Jokes on me, they're closed today. I completely did not realize it was Easter. <laughs> oh. Day 21. Now, one of my biggest game changers in my wellness routine over the last year has been focusing on sleep. And cryo really did improve this. Every single night that I had done cryo that day, I found it improved my quality sleep. I will note once or twice I did it after 5 p.m. and I found I was way too buzzed and I stayed up way too late. So it actually didn't help because I didn't get as long to sleep. So I stopped ever going after 5 p.m. In reverse, I hate doing sauna early in the morning because I find it makes me sleepy and cozy and a little too relaxed when I kind of want to go, go, go. So I like to do sauna at night because that sleepiness helps me drift off into sleep. Good night. So I always make sure to do sauna after 5 p.m., cold exposure before 5 p.m. This is just my own personal experience. I I'd love to hear down in the comments if you experience the same or if you've done sauna and cold exposure and experienced the exact opposite. And today I went in without my hat because I'm such a wuss and I don't have a hat. I can be in shorts in cold weather and be fine as long as I have a hat and it did feel slightly colder. I kept seeing these ads. These three minutes of just standing in the cold could burn 800 calories. And the idea is, yes, if you're on the verge of hypothermia, your body is shaking uncontrollably. Yes, blood is flowing. It's trying to warm you up. And there is a lot of research that experiencing, spending time in the cold boosts your metabolism, but it's always very minuscule amounts. I could not find a single research study that said it would burn 800 calories. I think it was more they were taking studies of hypothermia 
and people being outside for that and like reverse engineering it and be like cryotherapy was this cold and when people got to this close in antarctica they burned this many calories i'm like eh, it's not really the same but let's do some math now this isn't perfect but just roughly typically 3500 calories equals one pound if you want to lose a pound of fat you have to be in a 3500 calorie deficit if you want to gain a pound you have to be in a 3500 calorie surplus doing it three to four times a week at 800 calories should result in 9600 calories burned throughout the month I made sure to eat at maintenance the entire month just as I normally would. I'm pretty good at maintaining my weight, so I just kind of was mindful. Eating enough to match my energy expenditure. So then 9,600 calories should equate with about 2.7 pounds lost. And let's just account for a lot of errors in my own nutrition, in my body size and everything. Let's just say one pound lost throughout the month. And we'll find out at the end if that happened. From the Andrew Huberman Lab podcast. In short term, cold exposure increases metabolism as the body has to burn calories to increase its core body temperature. Total calories burned from the cold exposure are not that significant. However, the conversion of white fat to beige or brown fat, which are more highly metabolically active, can be beneficial, allowing people to feel more comfortable in the cold, trigger further and more sustained increase in metabolism. Day 25 was when I had a kind of, hmm, moment about this whole calorie burn. It's like a boot camp. Super interesting. I just finished a cryo. I noticed, I was like, what's my heart rate right after? And it was 124, consider I'm not like working out or anything. And normally when I'm walking, it's like 100. After doing cryotherapy for 30 days, here are the pros. It drastically improved my quality of sleep. There was a direct correlation. The days I did cryo, I had great sleeps. It reset my dopamine level. If I just had that depletion in the middle of the day where I always just naturally go for sugar, I go to scroll social media, I just do any quick fix and I feel like I'm just constantly chasing it and I'm not satisfied. Versus I felt like it was like I was reset. You know that like beginning of the day, morning you have and it's like, but dopamine's normal. I'm not chasing anything right now. It almost like reset me back to that, which also reset that icky midday feeling, which I'm constantly battling because I'm an early riser. I'm very productive before 10 a.m. Also, I'm also a night owl. Yes, I am both. I can become very creative and productive after 8 p.m. So like, what are my hours? 8 p.m. till 11 p.m. And then 5 a.m. till 10 a.m. When do most people work? One to 5 p.m. And I find I always just have this icky feeling. And doing the cryotherapy in the middle of the day almost completely got rid of that. It felt like having a clean shower in the middle of the day. The fourth was just that, it was super energizing. And fifth, made me happy, that's cheesy, but like it's just such good vibes after you. I got energy flowing, walk back to the office, I'd listen to some music and I just felt happy. Cheesy, but like, isn't that the point of everything? <laughs> Cons, it is expensive. Out of all these, you can just jump in the ocean, free. I mean, technically you pay for a shower, but showering in the cold saves money and a lot of people have access to a shower. I luckily found a place in Vancouver that allowed a subscription, so it wasn't that crazy priced. It was considering it was like three minutes, but all the cold plunges I found in Vancouver were like $120 a session versus I think this worked out to be about $45 a session. Still crazy, but business expense, CRA. See, I'm talking about it. So when my taxes come, they're like, why is she accept? Hmm? I declare bankruptcy. The other con, there is simply just not as much research. I went everywhere. I'll put here the two research studies I found that kind of used it, but it was mostly meta-analysis, which is pretty much analysis of other analysis combined together. Depending on your beliefs, some people find that proves more, sometimes proves less. So the jury is still out. Now for my results. Mentally, I find any cold exposure does this. I have done cold plunges. I have done cold showers. I find cold plunges are super unaccessible to me and cold showers are just miserable. If anything, I prefer to just go on a cold walk, dress a little less than I should and go outside for about half an hour. And I find it always improves my mental well-being when I am doing some cold exposure during the day. It energizes me, refreshes me, and it just adds a little bit of grit because everything else seems easy after that. Performance, I do think it slightly improved my performance. Coming up in next week's video, I'm gonna talk about getting back into running after my run streak, but I have been in a bit of a funk in my workout and it was just nice being able to fully recover instead of that like oh you're getting back to high intensity training and then after day two you're crippled and you're like why am i even doing this and getting over that hurdle it's hard to say if it was just that it improved my sleep which improved my recovery or if actually doing the cold exposure helped body composition so theoretically we talked about i should be able to burn almost two and a half pounds but for argument's sake we'll say a pound 
And what was my weight and body composition at then? The exact same, nothing changed. My weight was just the normal fluctuations. So if you're doing this as a quick fix to hopefully burn a couple extra pounds, no, it's not gonna drastically change anything. Do it for other reasons, like feeling good, resting better and all those things when you're feeling good you want to do more you want to eat better you want to drink water you want to do stuff good for yourself you want to move your body when you're feeling good so think of it as something to help you perform optimally whether you're an athlete or someone who just wants to add a bit more wellness to your life i guess i should also say there's probably a lot of people out there this isn't good for depending on medical conditions this is not a i'm not a doctor prescribing this overall i will personally be continuing this on as like a reset to my dopamine gremlin, which is something I am always working on. And just knowing this is something I can add in my routine. When money's tight, I will be removing it. Heard you're having money problems. But a month where I'm like, wow, I just need something to tame that gremlin in the middle of the day, instead of Instagram and TikTok, I'd rather spend that $40 on there versus, you know, $200 on therapy, just to be told. Have you just considered going off social media for a bit? <laughs> <laughs> and it drastically improved my quality of sleep, which always drastically improves my quality of life. You've probably heard that a hundred times, but there's just many of different ways to improve your quality of sleep. And it's just nice to have little things in your back pocket. I haven't been having good quality of sleep because my mind's racing, so I'm gonna journal. I just can't fall asleep at night, maybe cryotherapy during the day or sauna at night. Could a cold plunge work even better? Comment down below and I will do that challenge. I will buy one of those cold plunges that everyone seems to do on Instagram and just try and be a bro and see if it's worth it. I don't know where on earth I'd put it. Cause I can put it on my balcony and it will flow over into my neighbors. But you know what? For YouTube, I will do it. I'm just trying to think of places in Vancouver I could stash one. In the middle of Stanley Park, you're just gonna see a white tub and people are like, ah, Kelty's back at it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to see that, hit subscribe, throw this video a like if you enjoyed it, and comment down below any other wellnessy things you guys want me to test because God, I love it and I don't know why. And most importantly, have a great day. Go pet dog. Love you guys. Bye.